Hey everyone, we are so excited to go in the Wayback Machine to bring you this conversation with Gabrielle Hayes. Gabs is a visionary product leader and entrepreneur with a passion for efficiency and problem solving. In this episode, we talk with Gabs about the transformative power of letting go of societal expectations and embracing our own authentic selves to create a career and life that truly fits. We look at overcoming perfectionism and the importance of owning our own unique journeys in order to reclaim control and our personal power. Whether you're a perfectionist struggling to let go, an aspiring entrepreneur, or simply someone seeking more alignment in your life, this episode is packed with valuable insights and inspiration, and we are so excited to bring it to you once again. So sit back, relax, and get ready to be inspired by Gabrielle Hayes' story of resilience, growth, and the power of being true to yourself. everyone. Hello. Hi. Here, here we are. We have yet another episode of Kick-Ass Conversations with Louise and Kim, and I am not Louise. <laughs> I am today. You are today. <laughs> Maybe I'll be Louise next week. <laughs> but Louise, we are glad you're back. We missed you last week. Um, I missed you both too. So uh, I missed a, a great episode when I was on the road um, in northern Canada, um, northern Ontario, and they, they uh, wasn't all that reliable in cell service, so I couldn't dial in. Well, we're glad you're here, and that we are so glad that, Gabrielle, you have pulled up a chair to join us today. Um, we're going to learn a little bit more about you in a little bit, but we would love to start off as we do always. Um, to hear what everybody's celebrating. Anybody have anything to celebrate today? I am celebrating support systems, family, friends, and uh, just the ability to make it through each and every day. Amen to that. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, when there when there when we need it, right? Um, and uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, let's celebrate all of those people in our lives because we forget, right, of the support uh, that they constantly are showing. Um, and then when we need them, it's like, oh, yeah, they were there all along. That's right. Yeah. Um, I'm celebrating, well, sunshine. Uh, I'm celebrating uh, spring, um, as all good Manitobans do. The month of May, Kim, you're learning this, right? The month of May is that it may snow. Uh, it may rain. Uh, <laughs> we got really close. You may okay. need to turn your air conditioner on. Um, that's about the month of May in Canada. So um, <laughs> just take your pick any day, right? Your pick. Um, what, yeah. what, I, what did I, I saw there, somebody on TikTok had something really funny. It was that you have winter. No, you have summer, fall, winter. And, oh, I can't, oh my God, I can't remember. It's like desolation. I mean, it's just, <laughs> oh, deception and deception. Oh, it's yeah. Probably, yeah. <laughs> because it's like, we start with these totally tall piles of gray mush. That would be snow piles. And then at some point you think that they're going to melt, but they only partially melt and then you get a really warm day and then they all the way melt. And then some of it comes back because suddenly it's snowing again. <laughs> and then you have some plants that are like, okay, it's, we're ready to be planted. We're here. We're going to grow a little bit. And then it goes below zero. It goes below freezing again. And you're like, well, what is this? It's the season of deception. I thought that was the greatest thing. 
Um, spring is deception absolutely. in Canada. Uh, yeah. Um, and like all good Manitobans, I always start talking about the weather. I don't know why that is, uh, because it just impacts us so much, impacts me anyways. Um, I would like, to, can I celebrate another thing besides the weather? Of course. Um, so I started taking uh, a few weeks ago, I started taking an improv class <laughs> um, because it terrifies me. Um, I learned yesterday that there is a show um, in front of people. Um, <laughs> I thought it was just taking a workshop with other people who were terrified. Um, well, you have to perform now. Oh, there's a performance. Well, what, what's the date and how fast can I get to Manitoba? <laughs> it's like Kim is booking her trip now. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so I'm, I'm, I continue to celebrate um, crunchy places um, because those are the places where we have the most growth um, and the most learning. And it's like, holy cow, I'm kind of shitting my pants a little bit, but um, we'll see. We'll be live um, the the day after I have a performance. And so um, in a few weeks, uh, you'll have to tune in and see uh, what kind of state I'm in. Um, but yeah, um, I'm celebrating crunchy places. Which is different than celebrating crunchy that. peanut butter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, Gabrielle? I said you've been doing a lot of that following your journey this year, and it's exciting to watch. Absolutely. It was really leaning into those places. I, I tell my clients all the time, it's like, you know, those scary bits, those things that scare you. Um, those, those are beacons that are telling you it's important to pay attention to. And so why do we shy away from scary places when there's like some really great stuff in there? Um, and it's, it's those places, it's those things that are important, um, and those places worth exploring. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's it's scary, crunchy, and yeah, not peanut butter, um, but it's been a really, really interesting. Yeah. I am celebrating that after two weeks, I get to see my husband in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, that's, I'm happy. I am happy as clam. He, he's over on YouTube listening to us as he's descending, and I really hope that that's like he's descending and they're not falling from the sky and that's what he's telling me. <laughs> Um, so yay, honey. See you soon. I'm thinking <laughs> is you'll be home at the same time. So <laughs> um, date night. Yeah, we don't get those, but we, we will figure it out. It's all good. Um, but I am celebrating. I'm celebrating. Yes. Seeing him a hundred percent seeing him. I'm also celebrating that for the most part, I held my shit together for two weeks. Um, the last time my husband, so he travels a lot, like 50 to 60% of the time. And um, the last time he was away for a week, which was a month ago, um, one of our cats passed away. And oh so I'm like following our pets around the house. Like, did you sneeze? Are you okay? Is everything okay? Why did you puke? Oh my God, what's happening? Did you poop okay? Like, right. I'm losing my not my mind dealing with like nobody else can die on my watch. <laughs> this is not okay. And so that's been scary, right? In and of itself, like being a solo parent of one human child and, and th well, ugh, I'm not used to saying not three fur babies, two fur babies. It's a lot. And right. The, the changing seasons and the things that have to happen with the house and all of that. I'm celebrating that I held my shit together and I'm running my business and I'm, you know, being a present mom. So I'm celebrating that I did all of that and I get to see my sweet loving husband in an hour. Love it. So that's what's going on there. Um, I'm going to introduce everybody to you, Gabrielle. I know when we met, um, Amanda introduced us. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Amanda Neely, who was on the show in the way back Ooh, almost. Yeah. Two, yeah. Well, six months ago. Um, when we first started doing uh, the show with guests, um, she was one of our first. And um, Louise knows Amanda as well because she's part of a group that we take uh, that we run um, called the Kickass Career Collective. And it is it was an amazing conversation that we had. We had so much fun, and I loved that. And I'm not going to share your aha. I'm going to let you share your aha. 
Um, but I love that you had an aha after our conversation and then you shared it with us like that. That's so like, right. We have these conversations all the time and we can go away and we process whatever happened in that conversation, but we rarely get that opportunity to go back to that person and say, guess what? This is what came out of that conversation for me. So thank you for sharing that. I will let you share that with the world in a moment. I'm going to introduce you first. Um, so Gabrielle is a visionary product lead leader with an unwavering passion for efficiency and problem solving with an extensive background in product development and a proven track record of delivering outstanding results. Her career was defined by her ability to achieve the next promotion and salary raise. Hmm. I might've been there myself. Um, she was your perfect corporate steward until she realized she wasn't aligned um, with the life of intentionality she set out to build. In fact, it was taking away from it. She took her infectious energy, passion for innovation, and dedication to excellence to begin chasing a career that fit all of the parts for herself. She still tackles incredibly complex business challenges. She thinks outside the box, all while getting to teach others to do the same and chase their own career confidence. Gabrielle, tell us a little bit more about you. I know there's a question that Louise loves asking. All right. Yeah, oftentimes we we never imagine that we end up here in this place doing this thing um, and, and going on this career journey. Um, I want to know, Gabrielle, a little bit about your career journey like and, and what that's like. There are like notes and flavors that I heard just in that introduction and I'm like, oh yeah, there's some juicy bits in there. Tell us more. Yeah, definitely has been a journey. Um, I set out, I was going to be a teacher. I was going to teach elementary school kids. You couldn't tell me any different. My grandparents still joke that they'd walk into my room and I'd have all the stuffed animals lined up and I was teaching them. Um, and then life happened and I had a child of my own and I needed to hurry up and provide for said infant. And so at that point it was just, how do I find a stable income? So I, I jumped into healthcare and I still am super passionate about healthcare just because I spent so many of my years there. and I bounced around a bit from working in the clinic to working in operations. And that led me to be a project manager by trade. So I did all the formal training and all of that. And that was wonderful and very type A and OCD. So project management kind of aligns with me really well there, but I definitely had this creative side of me that was missing and project management was just too by the book for me. Um, and so by chance, I landed a product management role, which many of us who are in the product industry, that's what happens. None of us set out to be product managers. We fall into product management. Um, and it was that perfect mix for me of still being able to be a little bit OCD, still being able to stick to a schedule, a budget, and have a reason that I could see my way out and make sure I delivered. But I could be creative. We could draw stuff on napkins and make it come to life on front of your computer screen. And it was just this huge light bulb moment for me. Um, and I haven't looked back since. And so recently I had someone ask, you know, do you want to be a thought leader in the product industry? And it just had never occurred to me, but I was like, I don't want to be, I am going to be. And so um, that's where I'm at now is just chasing um, kind of all the new trends and things that are happening in product management so that I can bring it to other people and mainly career changers. I spend a lot of time with helping them find that passion and career that aligns with them. Yeah, absolutely. So it does sound like you, you, what is it? The apple didn't fall far from the tree. When you think about the stuffies in your room and the teaching and all of that, you didn't end up that far. Maybe your path wasn't straight, but. Yeah, I joke. I'm still a teacher. I get to tell my 10 year old self that I still got to be a teacher just of adults and not quite what I had originally envisioned, but it works out fabulous. You catch yeah. far, far fewer colds that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that thought too. Yeah. <laughs> and and that like really does lead into our into our topic today is like is that hook, right? Like you let go of what you thought a teacher was and you let go of what you thought a career in education looked like. Um, and you got to define what what that was on your own terms, still living in alignment with, right? Like your strengths, your superpowers, your values, uh, and finding a place where you can do all of those things, but nothing like you imagined. And I think that it's that it is that hook sometimes that can really pull us along in the wrong direction because we're very focused on a job title or on a, on a particular vision we have for ourselves. Mm -hmm. 
I was going to say. <laughs> Go ahead, Gabrielle. You were going to say something. Oh, no, I was just in total, total agreement with you, Luis. That, yeah, it, it took time and a little bit of a curvy road, but I feel like I finally have hit exactly where I'm supposed to be at this point in my life. And that may change as, as years go on. But for right now, I feel like I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. So with where you are now, right, kind of what you're building um, for yourself and for others, what are some of the ways that you have seen yourself needing to let go of expectations of what will be? Oh, uh, <laughs> well, one, I will tell you, I never envisioned myself as an entrepreneur. I, you know, I mean that wholeheartedly when I say I was your perfect corporate steward. And I heard someone describe it recently that I was a high achiever who lacked self-confidence. So I was willing to be convinced to anything that corporate ladder told me I needed to do. And so just letting go of steady income, st you know, just this normal kind of what I was taught was a normal career. That was a huge thing to let go for me. Um, because even when I started my entrepreneur journey, I tried to be both. I tried to be an entrepreneur and still in the corporate world. Um, and that'll kill you if you try and ride that lane too long. So just, yeah, letting go of, of that stability that I had come to feel accustomed with with a corporate career was huge. Yeah. And I remember as we were talking about kind of what you're building and I remember that like the, uh, we were talking about the growth that you created in such a short period of time. I'm curious about what that, how, like how that came about for you. Yeah. So this was kind of my aha moment that Kim and I had. And um, I would say in about six months, my life and and how I showed up for myself and my confidence in what I was doing just drastically changed. And that huge unlock was realizing I have some accountability for every step that got me here, but they're also all learning lessons. And so instead of looking back and like, you know, judging myself for some of those decisions that I maybe would not have made now looking back, I just took ownership of them. And it gave me that confidence to just stand up and, and be proud of who I am and be proud that no matter what obstacle has showed up in front of me, I'm willing to learn from it. Um, and so I think as long as I'm learning from each lesson, then that's what's important. And, and that helped definitely unlock that confidence for sure. Yeah, the, the recovering perfectionist, right? Who um, we carry a lot of, of uh, weight around failure, right? And and really getting um, focused on what doesn't work. Really get focused on like um, carrying some of that, like you said, like some of that blame and say like, look at look at these things that did not work out for me. Um, and as a perfectionist, right? I know for a hundred, I know exactly where you're coming from, hundred percent, because it's like I. I was it good enough or I didn't do enough? I didn't try enough. And that failure just adds on top of each other and it just keeps building. Um, and to get over that, to get through that and to change your mindset around that, it's, it's not an easy thing because that in, is so ingrained in who we are and what we believe to be true, how we see the whole world is wrapped mm -hmm. up in that in every place. And that's not just career, right? That's, that's in every place in our lives. Um, and, and it can be really, really tough um, to get, to get to a place where we get to like just turn it around and say like look at all of the things that I've tried look at all of the the lessons I've learned um and I've learned some good ones <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah blowers come to mind <laughs> no uh oh I can't help you with that one down in Oklahoma but <laughs> <laughs> true <laughs> What, what, so your aha moment, that place where it's like, it felt like there was a big shift. There was this big, like, turn of events where it went from not, not failure, but of actual successes, just looking differently. They're all lessons. Um, what, what keeps us stuck? Or what do you think keeps us stuck in that place? Like, and it's, I'm talking to all the perfectionists out there. Um, what, what is it that we get so attached to that we just, we can't do that on our own? 
Yeah. I think if you're talking about mainly for perfectionists, it's that control, like being able to see it through to the end. Um, and I've been borrowing this phrase from Kim ever since she and I talked, but unfortunately for me, I had to have a capital T trauma that shook me out of that. Um, it, it changed my life completely and it just made me e evaluate and look at things differently because that was a moment in time in my life where I lost all control. I didn't give it, I didn't have a chance to have control over what happened in the situation. The only thing I had control over was how did I react to it? And so I just, in that moment decided I was gonna live every day for what that day brought, what it was worth, because it's not promised to any of us. And so I think I would love to see, I don't know what the answer is, but I would hope to see that more perfectionists can have that kind of shakeup and that realization without having to go through the capital T, tra t trauma moments. Um, Cause you know, I, you don't wish that upon anyone, but just that ability to like awaken yourself and realize you only can control how you react to certain situations, but most of the things we encounter on a day in day out basis, they have outside factors or forces that are kind of changing what happens to you. And so you're only in control of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yourself, your thoughts, your actions, your, your reactions, right? That's, that's all those things that we tend to almost give away our power to other people um, by, mm -hmm. by either playing the victim or p placing blame elsewhere. Right. Um, it, it's not my fault that I can't X, Y, and Z. It's, it is, um, uh, I, I have to push myself harder because so-and-so or this situation calls for it. Um, so allowing ourselves to reclaim what I'm hearing there is reclaiming our power in that ownership of self. Like that's the only thing we can control. So let's own that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I heard you say a while back that you are um, kind of grabbing hold of this idea of you're going to be um, a thought leader in the in the um, product space. I am product management space. I'm curious where that ownership is now. Like what needs to be let go of so you can own that you are a thought leader in that space? Oh, such a good question. Um, I... <laughs> I probably one I need to talk to with my therapist too, but, um, you know, I think I'm definitely getting there. Um, and as silly as it is, you know, I think I still have some of those past, you know, behaviors that I'm still working through. Right. So being waiting on someone else to recognize it was a huge thing for me. It was like, I don't have the power to just say I am somebody else has to say I am. Um, and that's not true. You know, I have the full power to wake up every day and say, I am a thought leader and, and what comes of that is how it happens. Um, but I will say, you know, the reality is getting some recognition among leaders in our industry helped me get over that bridge. Um, and I think in a way that goes back to that community, right? Where you do have support around you. You just have to be willing to see it and open up to it. Um, but you're totally right, Kim. There's nothing in the way that I couldn't just wake up every day and say, I am. Um, other than I'm still growing and learning and I haven't quite gotten there yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's another type of letting go, right? For sure. It's, it's letting go of the stories that we're telling ourselves that I have to have this external validation before I can consider myself a thought leader. Right. It's, it's, it's a chicken and egg thing. Do you start with the thoughts and you put it out there in the world, regardless of the recognition that you get and you say, I am leading my thought, like these are my thoughts. And, and if you want to follow me because of my thoughts, I am now a thought leader or is a yeah. thought leader something, right? It's like, what story are you telling yourself about who you need to be or what you need to do to be a thought leader? Yeah. I, and and I, I think this is true for anything that we really desire. Right. And so uh, whatever that is in your in your career or in your life, when you think about like that, that's what I want. I want I want that thing. It's right there. It just happens to be over there. And as we can approach it in two different ways, right? we can. Right. Are we are we pushing ourselves towards it or are we pulling it closer to us? Right. And so the, those are the, those are the things. Um, and oftentimes like you have to listen to what your body is saying to say, well, how, how do I, how do I bring that closer? 
um, to, to me. I remember I did this exercise, this ideal day exercise. I don't know if anybody here has done it before, but it's like, what is your ideal day? What is it that you want for your life, your career, um, your relationships? And how does that work? And it, you go into a really dreamy place, which I think is so much fun to think about um, and to kind of unattach and to let go of how am I going to get there or that feels impossible or that is never going to come true. It's like, that's not what this exercise is all about. It's about where, where can we dream? Uh, right. What does that look like? Let's not worry about the how. Um, and I remember going through that exercise and being like dreaming as big as I could, um, around my business and what that looked like. And then when I read it back and I really looked at how I spend my day, who's in my life, what what joy I get, um, I was like, check, 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 check. And I was like, holy crap, like, that's really cool to say, like, it doesn't look like I imagined it. Right. And I still have it. I have all the feelings that come with it. I'm living my best life. Um, and and I'm growing at the same time. It's not one or the other. Um, but I think like going through that um, exercise and like really looking at like, maybe it didn't look like how I imagined it would look like, but oh, it sure feels like I want it to feel. Yeah, I love that too, because it's allowed to change. And I think, especially as women, I feel like we, you know, you kind of are taught, you kind of pick what your dream life's gonna look like, and then you just work towards that always. And there's not a lot of talk around that changes depending on what, you know, what age I am, what mode I'm in in my life, what's important to me right now. Um, and so I think to giving myself that freedom that what I want in this moment is different than what I wanted five years ago and is likely going to be different when I want five years from now, but I'm allowed to chase what I want right now and do that unapologetically. And so that opens that door of like, I'll try anything once, right? <laughs> because you just don't know whether it's going to work or not work until you get out there and try it. And so um, being unapologetic for that, I think really has allowed me to also let go because I no longer have an expectation of anything other than a lesson. As long as I'm learning from it, then it was worth my time and worth my investment. So I got all tingly when Louise was talking because the the perfect day exercise is it's essentially an exercise in scripting when you're talking about manifesting. So if you are cre on a regular basis creating a vision of your perfect day, it could be your perfect business, it could be the perfect ne next offering, the perfect next, whatever that thing is um, that you want to draw closer to yourself, the more you lean into scripting it and giving it the details and then letting go of how it actually shows up in your life, it is the magic that Louise just talked about, is that recognition. And Gabrielle, what you just talked about, it's different than what you maybe put on paper. And yet you recognize that your vibration now has just brought that closer to you and you are living that. And so when we are sitting in this space and we're like journaling, journaling, journaling about all of these things or, you know, sitting on a yoga mat or on a meditation cushion, and we're just dreaming up all of these things that we want, and we spend our day hemming and hawing and worrying about paying the bills and da, 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 like we are not in that vibration of what it is that we're saying we want. And when we get that vibrational match, it generally does look different, but it feels the same. And here's, and that's the thing that people like lose sight of all the time. What is it? Why did you want that thing? Why did you want to bring that closer to you? Because you wanted to have a feeling. And so now do you have that feeling like Louise, when you were like, check, check, check. Oh my gosh, I'm living that day. Did you have that feeling of like, yeah. 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 <laughs> right. That's the cool shit. It's like, there have been times where I look around and I go, huh, how did I get here? And then I can trace back the map of the wishes that I had of the perfect days or perfect whatevers. And that I spent time getting myself aligned to what I wanted. And as it showed up, I didn't even realize it showed up much like Louise just said, much like you said, Gabrielle, in terms of like how your, how your career has gotten you somewhere that you didn't even expect because 
you've aligned yourself to it. And when it shows up, now you're in that. Now it's like, oh, now what's next? Yeah. Right. But the key is the letting go. The key is the letting go. Because if you can let go of what it's going to look like, but hold on to what it's going to feel like, that's when the magic happens. Yeah. I love the way you guys are describing that to you that who cares what it looks like? <laughs> Nobody who cares, cares, right? Nobody. If, if, if you have decided this is how I want my life to feel, this is how I want my career to feel, this is how I want my family to feel, whatever that is, who cares what it looks like? If you've built and gotten to that level and that alignment, enjoy it, live it up. It's not going to be there forever, right? Because again, external forces are going to come and disrupt that a little bit, but then that's your time to figure out what's my next alignment. What's the thing I want next? And it's the feeling that you're searching for. So I love that, that clarification because I think so many times when you think about vision boards and dreaming, everyone's focused on the physical thing that it looks like. And that's not what's going to change your life. That's not what's going to make the long-term impact. It's more about how do you show up and how do you experience what's right in front of you? It's about being. Mm -hmm. Right. It, it's that it's that beingness. And, and Louise, I know you and I have had conversations recently um, in over in the collective about um, a, a, allowing this. I think I made up that <laughs> word the other day. A great made up word. I've used it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Trademark, Kim Romy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but this allowing this right, a, allowing ourselves to create space to allow the things that we want. And to allow those things to exist in a way that is not so concrete and literal. Because when we're so focused on the concrete and literal, we are not actually connected to who, who we want to be or who we are being. So to me, it all comes back to that beingness. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it, it's also like, you know, I talk a lot about job crafting and career crafting with my clients because oftentimes we think they think, and, and I know I did too. It's like, Oh, what's out there that I can do. Right. Like, so what's the box I can fit in? What's that thing. And so we often are limiting our options, our choices by somebody else's definition of what is out there. What does work look like? What does a business look like? What does a career in pick an industry look like? What does that ladder look like? That's somebody else's dream. That's somebody else's creation of what they wanted. And it gets put out there and everybody's like, yeah, I want the, what they want. And so we often get stuck in this place where it's like, yeah, but I only know that, right? I only know that that's the next step, that a promotion is the next step, or I only can build my business in this very specific way because that's what everybody else is doing. That's bullshit. That's not what everybody else yeah. is doing. That's what people might be doing that you see, that we see people doing that. But that's not everybody in the world, but we think that it is. We think that that's the, that's the answer because that's what we see success look like. Um, but that's only success in our little tiny bubble. That's only success in, in those conversations. We only know what we know. When we can dream and when we can let go of that, then the possibilities just like explode. I love that. Heidi Power over on LinkedIn just shout, uh, just shared, no more boxes. This so resonates with me. Heidi, thank you for the, sharing that. Yeah. It was, I was laughing over here, Louise, because this morning in my, I was journaling this morning and I was like, who the hell gives you the right? Like you, someone. <laughs> who the hell gives you the right? Right, not you. Um, to say that, like to, def to try and define that for me. And actually I was responding. I had a, <laughs> and the, if this client listens to this episode, she'll know what I'm talking about. Um, but there was a, uh, we were both watching succession and there was a line in there that says that, right. My, oh, my kids, they're not serious. And the dad is, is a bit nutty, but anyway, so this idea of seriousness, like so many women that right in, in, um, corporate world, in nonprofit world and whatever, and uh, entrepreneurs, we want to be taken seriously, this whole idea of seriousness. And so I was so pissed and it was from this conversation I had with a client this week around this idea, around that quote. And I was like, who the hell gives you the right to tell me what serious is? Yeah. And this was something that throughout my, my corporate and nonprofit career, 
in my legal career really pissed me off, right? No more boxes. Stop telling me I'm not serious because I have blue hair or I wear a lot of, you know, rings or I don't like to wear suits. Who gives you that right? And for us to let go of other people's definitions of what we feel like we need to be is the epitome of the power behind letting go, right? That's for, when we get sure. to be living in freedom. Well, and I think you look at most companies that are notable in our lives, right? They all did something wild and crazy that had never been heard of, like, most people, when they were talking about this as our idea, was like, that's a stupid ass idea. Why are you doing that? <laughs> but, you know, it's grown into these major corporations or company and household names. And so to me, that also gives me the freedom because I may have to fight a little bit harder because like you're saying, Kim, I may not be taken as serious, but I'm going to show up as who I am. I want my students and my coaching clients. I want them to understand I'm a person. I'm going to curse. I'm going to look a hot mess some days. I'm probably going to be late, uh, you know, every now and again, because I'm running from one thing to the next, but that doesn't mean I care less. It doesn't mean my impact is less. It doesn't mean my creativity is less. And so I'm like, you know what, if, if all these other companies can just get out there and try random things and some of it fails and some of it really takes off, then so can I, there's no rule that says I can't be the, excuse me, part of that either. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. Ooh, juicy stuff. Juicy, juicy stuff. It, it is, it's interesting to me because we've, we've gone around this conversation with this idea of letting go in so many different ways. And, um, and it's fascinating to me how, like, I always, and my clients, myself, my daughter, I'm always saying channel your inner Elsa because the react, like, the more we can let shit go, whatever it is, whether it's control, it's thoughts, it's listening to somebody else's stories, all of the things that we've been talking about, the more we can channel our inner else's and let that shit go, the more we get to reclaim our lives for ourselves and go back to what you were talking about, Gabrielle, have control in our lives that we are so desperate to have, but we're grasping at all these other ways that is not actually giving it to us. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Love it. Love this conversation. We don't talk about it enough. I think this, this idea of letting go and unhooking from what we're supposed to, right? What we should be doing, what we're supposed to be doing. And it's like, yeah, it's like, no, <laughs> I'm doing, I'm doing what I'm meant to, to be doing. And I want to keep doing that. And how I yep. meant to be doing it to, right. As you said, I may show up a hot mess. I may not know what the hell I'm talking about, but I'm a thought leader because I'm showing up and I'm leading with my thoughts. There you go. <laughs> Just by pure definition, Kim, you give them thoughts <laughs> and somebody follows you, then you're technically a thought leader. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Ladies, what are our golden nuggets from today's conversation? What are our, our takeaways? And if you are listening live, we'd love to know what your takeaways are from the conversation as well, because it was twisty and windy and great today. <laughs> I'm going to steal from Louise. I love this pulling to you. I, I, I still feel like even at this point in my life, I'm still in this thought process of chasing this life of my dreams, but I also have this ability to pull it towards me and um, just in the space that I create around me. So thank you for sharing that, Louise. I really, really resonated with that one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my, my nugget is something, Kim, something you said was this, this whole idea of like, what is serious? Like why, who decided that, that work, that what we do, like, is it really serious? Like, not really. Um, and then why do we have to show up that way? We can make an impact, um, and a bigger impact when we're showing up as ourselves and when we're aligned with what we believe, that's where the real magic is. And so I love that reminder, Kim, is like, serious, like, seriously, can we just stop? <laughs> can we just stop? Stop thinking that way. Stop it. Stop it. Yeah. It's so funny because the one brain surgeon I have met in this lifetime so far, brain surgery, super serious business, Absolutely. super serious business, funniest person. Yeah. I tell people all the time, like, especially in my, and you know, the technology line of work, 
for the most part, we are not having people's lives on the line here. Like it may all blow up and it is going to suck and we are gonna have to clean it up and work hard, but like have freaking fun. We are humans, we are people, like we're in this shit together. So like nobody's dying because their website went down or whatever, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Although, and I know this is going live on LinkedIn, I certainly felt that when I got put in LinkedIn jail this week, DM me if you want to know more, I felt like my life was over for a hot minute. And Louise thankfully gave me her ear. And then you had to gave me their ears. <laughs> but I got to a good place with it. Um, but right, and I th so my takeaway, my golden nugget from this is is that that locus of control, Gabrielle, that you were talking about, it's really um, how do we how do we let go of everything else so we can bring ourselves back to the one thing we can control, which is ourselves through that responsibility and ownership. And so I think that locus of control, that's that's really my takeaway from today's conversation and and what I want to continue to play with for myself because, you know, it, it is a space for those who talk to me regularly, freedom of choice, freedom in general, ownership of thought, sovereignty, big topics for me that I talk about all the time. Definitely what I believe and being thrown in LinkedIn jail definitely made me feel like I didn't have control and I do. And so it is, um, and I didn't do anything wrong. I digress. Anyway, <laughs> But I, right, it is my, where do I control? What do I have as ownership? Um, oh, Heidi is sharing her um, takeaway as well. I love this. When I show up as my authentic self, I do not need to explain myself. If someone is curious, I will share, but I don't owe anyone an explanation. Beautiful, Heidi. And here's what's cool. End of June, you get to talk to Heidi live because she's going to be on our show on June 30th. Yay. <laughs> um. So Gabrielle, where can people find you in the world? What, like if people want to connect with you, what, where do you want them to connect with you? Yeah. So we're on all the socials, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, even that was a huge uh, letting go moment for me to get onto TikTok, but um, we're on all the socials at product X agile. Um, and then I'm also on LinkedIn personally at Gabrielle Hayes. So I'm happy to connect with anyone there. Um, and we're chasing after career confidence. So don't give up, even if you're having a tough time with it now. Keep at it. It's in your realm realm of control. Yeah. And so who do you specifically work with? So that they so, Yeah, we specifically work with product management and agile professionals who are looking to increase their skill set, increase their confidence in their role, maybe jump to the next role. Um, so just a lot of career support and education around that. Love it. Yeah. Sort of cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and Louise, do you know what we're doing next week? Mm, yes, we're going to meet with Lisa Bragg. Lisa Bragg, who just wrote a book called Bragging Rights, where we get to talk about how we get to brag about ourselves. Like we have that right to brag about ourselves. And so I'm super excited to have this conversation, to celebrate her new book and to learn all about the ways that we can authentically show up for, our, for ourselves and talk about ourselves in a way that feels good. Because most of us are like, eh. Yeah, it's hard. It is hard. Lisa's got the perfect last name for this book, though. I'm excited. I can't <laughs> right? wait for this. I, I'm like, you were destined for it. I, That's right. See, look at that alignment that she probably didn't even know she needed. There we go. <laughs> um, This has been so much fun. So much, I like, I just so much fun. Love it. Thank you, ladies, so much. This has been great. Thank you, Gabrielle, for joining us today. I appreciate you um, and your thoughts and uh, wishing you the best. This probably won't be the last time we chat for sure. Nope. I bug Kim on the regular now. <laughs> <laughs> Not bug and love it. All right. We look forward to talking to you soon and we look forward to seeing everybody else next week. And for now, oh, I guess it's bye for now. It's bye for now. <laughs> Bye for now. Take care, everyone. I'm just excited. <laughs> I'm going to see my husband. Okay, bye. Yay! <laughs>